Kat. Minu mõelest küll väga hea eeskuja Jüri poolt. No absoluutselt, mina ütlen tip-top öidat püsti loodan ainult, et peaministril oleks ka peaministri närvilise ja pingilise töökõrvalt piisavalt aega keele õpingutele keskenduda. Täpselt nii. Aga Paul Oberschneider on mees, kes tegi Eesti kinnisvar ääris 90. suuri tegusid kasvatades oma äride mahtu paarisajas dollarist lausa 200 miljonini. Vahetult enne finantskriisi saabumist müüs mees oma Eesti ärid maha ja suundus Argentiinasse poolo hobuseid kasvatama. Pealt näha õige otsus viis tegelikuses Oberschneideri aga sügavasse depressiooni. It's because my father's from South Estonia. His family's from from Karski Nuya and Tartu in that area. And um, I just wanted to learn more about him because he died when I was rather young. Paul Oberschneider on Eesti Verd Ameerika pörsikaupleja, kes saabus kunagi 90. alguses oma isamaale koormaks mitu sõltuvust ning raha puudus. Estonia had only just then regained its independence. So, so what, what kind of country uh, was waiting for you? It was exciting and it was pretty wild actually. Olympia used to have a, a nightclub called XL and this is where all the glitterati and gangsters and would hang out. And people actually would take their guns out of their jackets and put them in the cloakroom. Remember the Estonian Air bomb across from what was then the Tallinn Business Center blew up, you know. So there was crazy stuff happening all over the place. But at the same time, there was this feeling of, of hope and that everything was possible and everybody was doing everything. Laskus vaid 400 dollarit, mõtles Paul, Eestis paar nädalat veeta, et siis edasi Postonisse õppima minna, kuid saatustahtis teisiti ja ta jäi siia, et ehitada üles oma kinnisvara imperium Oberhaus. It was, it was built on the back of um, my buying some flats and renovating them and then selling them and renting them out. And then, of course, it became much bigger than that. So we grew this agency business, which started with four people. And by the end, we had 350 people. Järgne nõu poole teise aastakümne jooksul kasvas Oberschneideri äride maht 200 miljoni dollarini. Vahetult enne finantskriisi müüs aga pool oma Oberhausi maha ja suundus Argentiinasse poolo hobuseid kasvatama. Pealt näha õige otsus viis mehe, aga tegelikuses sügavasse depressiooni. So I got in at the right time. And I got out at the right time. One week before the crisis, I was out. And what I should have done was have a holiday, spend a little money, have some fun, and come back and sit in my chair. Paul jõudis enese kaemuses tõdemuseni, et mitte asjad või raha ei ole see, mis sind õnnelikuks teeb, vaid sinu staatus ja sind ümbritsev sõpus ja tutvuskond, mille Paul suures osas Eestis kaotas. I had, in 2012, I'd come to the point where I had lost my identity. My name wasn't on anything anymore. I didn't have all these people to call anymore. Nobody was calling me. Um, I couldn't point to things and say, well, I did that or I did that or it was, there was, you know, so I was really attached to things because what it taught me was, you know, we're not, we're not our things. <clears throat> Those things are a reflection of what we do, but we are who we are, you know? And it doesn't matter where I am, I'm still the same person, whether I built that shopping center or that hotel or not. Nüüd on mees aga Eestiga taas rohkem seotud, sest avaldas siin oma raamatu, miks müüja takkosid Afrikas, milles on ära toodud need ärimudelid, mis pooli ennast aidanud. So from a business point of view, it's probably a very good practical self-help guide, um, intertwined with a, a bit of a memoir. Poolil on ka Eestis veidi kinnisvara soetatud, kuid suuri kaubanduspindasid ta enam siia juurde ehitaks, sest neid on siin juba niigi küllaldaselt. You have probably the highest amount of retail per capita than any European country. You probably are in the Guinness Book of World Records. And I, I just don't know um, whether people just are hanging out or whether actually shopping, because eventually the tenants have to pay rent. And the only way they can pay rent is if they're selling things but if they're all selling the same thing to the same person and you know at some point it stops so <clears throat> i think we're dangerously close to overbuilding 
Ka elukondliku kinnisvaraga on Eestis pooli hinnangul lood üsna piiri peal, sest kuigi nõudlus suurlinnade korteritele on suur, pole paljudel nende eest võimalik siiski väärilist hinda välja käia. Väike asulates eluaseme müügist aga eriti kasu ei saa. Või mis hakkab saama pooli kodumaal Ameerikas, kus võimul just nimelt tippärimees Donald Trump? Over Schneider arvates oli vaatamata kõigele Trump kahest võimalikust kandidaadist Ameerika läheb parem valik. He's a good negotiator, that's for sure. Probably from a political point of view, the, the deals that he's going to strike with other countries and you know, I'm sure that you know, I have all the confidence that he's probably the, the right guy for that. As an administrator, that's yet to be seen. He's, he does some pretty bizarre things. Muidugi ei saame üle ka ümber ka miljoni dollari küsimusest, kuidas siis ikkagi saada miljoneid teenivaks ärimeheks. Huuli sõnul on siin märksõnaks ärkel olek ja õigete võimaluste ära tundmine. Show up every day and, um, and be awake and look for those knocks on the door um, and, and then open the door when it's time, you know. Don't spend more than you make. Buy low, sell high, pay late and collect early. 2012. aastal tegi Ober Schneider ise eduka comebacki suurde ärisse. Ostas Londonis tervisliku kiirtoidu Keiti osaluse, mille siis suureks paisutas ning kasumi ka maha müüs. Nüüd vaatab ta ringi taas ka Eestis ning ehkutab midagi vanade ärikamraatega siin ettegi. Sest kuigi finantsiliselt on mees kindlustatud elu lõpuni, pole käed rüppes istumine tema tassike teed. Lähipäevad ilmaprognoosid 